Hi, I'm Ralph Salmons. I'm a drummer from London. Um, I'm primarily a session drummer, but I've done a lot of different styles of music in my time. And um, I'm here today with my colleague Hayden to talk to the students about recording drums. That's the cover title for what we're doing. We are looking into a lot of detail about how to record drums successfully, what mic choices to use, what instrument choices to use, all of these things. And we're discussing how to get different sounds in the studio. My name's Hayden, Hayden Brindle. I'm a producer engineer. And um, Ralph and I have worked together for many years. And the idea, as, as Ralph said, the, the idea of this was to um, introduce students and possibly engineers and producers and, and other musicians to the sort of processes we go through in the studio. And it's much more introduce people to things maybe they hadn't thought about. It's much more refined and there's a great deal more subtlety than just putting a microphone out on a drum and then EQing it. So it's a two-day course designed to be really quite in-depth about not only the practical approaches, but the musical approaches, the, the psychological approaches to dealing with it. And it's not only what you do, it, it's why. It's the, it, we're asking the question, why? Why do we do this? We, we know how to respond to each other. We know how each other will respond. And there's, a, there's a, a respect there and a trust. So that is a given, is what we do within a session is wide open quite often. I mean, it can, it can be quite close depending on the musical content, depending on the time available. We've got an idea of what we like. And I think um, I, I certainly gravitate towards the way Hayden gets a sound and I love the way he gets the sound and I love the sounds that he gets. And so that goes in with what I'm, the sound that I'm trying to make. I think that was one of the things that we were really making an effort to get engaged the students with is that um, there are two components to this relationship. It's not just the recording and it's not just the playing, but each one of those needs the other to get the result. So we're, we have really encouraged them to look into exactly what they want to get and then how they're going to get it and then how to work with drummers in order to get a maximum quality of sound, quality of performance, mm -hmm. something inspiring, something fresh, possibly something original. And um, tomorrow we're gonna to be talking about the, the DNA of how to construct a groove and the effect that uh, pushing the time or dragging the time, all of these things will have on the music. And so that it's more than just a sonic aspect of changing the mics, even though today we have experimented with mics. We have changed, yeah, we've, I mean, because we've got such a great selection of microphones here, it's given us the freedom to say, well, let's, let's do this for this particular song. We've, we've got prepared backing tracks with, without drums there. So we've been able to play things and then Ralph's been able to explain, this is the sort of thing I want to play on this. And I think this sort of drum, I think this sort of feel would be great. And then we, we've used the microphones that we think is the most eloquent way of translating that. My own personal little bit of great satisfaction about what's happened today is that the students have responded to the very subtleties of working that I particularly love. And they've heard and they've listened and they've understood. What gave me great joy is that on occasions, I think some of them have been surprised how Ralph just putting a bit of moon gel on a drum radically changes the sound of the drum. You think just that tiny thing it wouldn't won't, won't make that much difference. It makes a huge difference if it's placed in the right place and if the right sort of pressure is applied and everything. These subtle changes speak volumes, absolute volumes. And the, the subtle change of let's move the bass drum mic a bit further away or let's move it a bit nearer or let's use a dynamic on the on the snare drum or let's use a condenser or, or, 
or let's use ambience in omnidirectional mode instead of cardioid. So all these, one can argue, tiny little things making a huge difference. And I'm really thrilled that they've been, all the students have been able to partake in that and see that and hear that and feel that and enjoy that and pass intelligent views and comments about it. So I think that that has been something I'm really, I've really been very, very happy with today is that we have, I, I, I'm not being arrogant, but I hope I'm not being arrogant, but I think we've successfully communicated that real love of the, the art of playing an instrument and recording that instrument with a great deal of sensitivity. Uh, and I've really enjoyed that aspect of, of what we've done today. Me too. The reason you choose to work with certain musicians is because you love the way they think, not because they play what you tell them to play. So the, the main impetus, the main motivation comes from what the musician, in this case, Ralph, what, what, what Ralph wants to play. And then, I mean, there, there may be a, a tiny adjustment. So, but the, 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 the main, the choice of mics is informed by two things, really. One, what's available in the studio? Because <laughs> that, that is a reality of life, is that not all the studios have got this incredible selection of microphones you have. The other choice is what Ralph wants to play. One of the things I think we respect in each other is uh, the absolute passion we have for what we're doing. And if Ralph says something I don't agree with, which it doesn't often happen, but if he says something I don't, I, or I don't hear, I, don't, I don't, don't hear it in the same way, I listen. I listen to what he's saying. I listen to why he's saying it. And obviously try to accommodate it. I 100% in terms of sound, try every time to fit with the music, always. So. Probably I have a sound of my own that uh, is maybe um, how I sound uh, as, a, as a drummer, but um, it's always for me uh, a job to try and make what I'm doing fit perfectly with the music. Mm. So I will choose different equipment. Uh, I will choose different snare drums. I will choose different cymbals. I will choose different heads. I will choose different sticks, brushes mallets, rods, all of these things, um, and how much I muffle. We, we did a lot of that with the students today and they, they really got that, which was fantastic, because mm. I think a lot of them didn't realize the difference it makes. Mm. Uh, and also we talked about, uh, you know, different choices of, of drum kits. For instance, I mentioned that I've got a drum set with calf heads on it. It's very organic sounding. They're, they're a completely different sound. They're amazing. And, um, you know, smaller bass drums, maybe an 18 inch bass drum, a 20 inch bass drum, a front head on the front, what that sounds like and the relationship that has to the bass. So I'm thinking about the sound. Um, I'm thinking about the equipment and also I'm using Hayden's advice to help me choose the pitch of the drum, which he will always help me with. So we can both get it together. Yeah, but also I think it's important to to know that when we're in the room together with, I mean, we generally are working with other musicians in the room. It's not only Ralph trying to fit in with the music. Once again, it's, it's an organic process. Like Ralph's playing may very much inform what the bass player is going to do. So it's not only Ralph fitting in with a pre- pre-planned, pre-ordained format is something we all work on together. Or, or the, the pianists may say, well, the, those triplets I'm doing there, they don't need reinforcing with, a, with cymbals or you know, with, a, with a bass drum. I, I think they should just ride over that absolute straight groove. Or, or what, a, you know, it can be anything. It's creating, not necessarily the composition, obviously, but it's creating the arrangement everybody together it's manipulating things so everybody has got this aim to do the best they can for the music i think when we started we, we started setting up last night uh, i i think ralph walks well you did 
I know he did. He walked around the studio space hitting a drum, saying, oh, you know, I, I think it sounds good here. This is where I, I think it should be, and I, and I agreed. And we took advice from studio engineers who were very familiar with the, the, uh, uh, the place here, the sound of the room. So that was simply where to put the drums. And there was a big carpet on the floor, and we agreed be nicer to have a smaller carpet so that the floor was, gave us a bit more reflection, a bit more life. And then from, from then on, it's just choosing the microphones that we had at our disposal to most eloquently capture what was being played on the drums for that particular track. I try to make the drum sound as good as possible. For Clean. We... Cleanliness is important. Yeah. There's a, there's a separation. There's a, a cleanliness. There's a focus. I think it's important the drums are focused. You, you, you work very hard at that, don't you? Well, I try to tune them so that they sound good. I like the sound of them. They sound good. But sometimes if the tom-tom is too high, there's it rings. Yeah, there's a harmonic sense to it. Yeah. You do it. Yeah. yeah, there is a little bit of a harmonic sense because I, like I like to hear the intervals. The intervals, yeah. Uh, but it's not uh, a must, but I do like it to hear good intervals on yeah. them. But that's just a um, coincidence, but it's nice. And then I just try and make them sound good so I like the sound of them. I think it's very important. No, it is. Yeah, it is important. I mean, most of the time I'm doing that. Mm. And just getting uh, everything ready. Mm which is something we were talking about today, so that when you're actually coming to play the music, I'm prepared not only with my equipment and the tuning and the muffling, but also the structure of the song. I know how You've the song You've got the music goes. written out. I've got the music written out, so I know what the song is. So it means when I play the drums, I can just play, we record, and we're talking about performance. Mm. So this is quite a big aspect. Mm. And we demonstrated that, and I think the students got that today. Because I, I did one take, then I did another take, and they were both usable. Yeah. Uh, I only did two takes. Two takes. And that was it. Yeah. And then uh, they were okay because I was prepared. So I think, you know, uh, preparation, obviously, in any recording process is a big part of it. Yeah. But I think sometimes when you're working with musicians as well, the musicians need to realize that. So um, people who are studying to be producers and engineers, if they have that realization now, they can help the recording process to become efficient, effective, and creative by using that technique. And really, when we've been on sessions together and there are the people are not prepared, the musicians don't know the the structure and they don't have their sounds right, this causes problems. It's hard being able to read and write is is really important for me to feel comfortable in a session you know if I, if I if i say to ralph let's go look let's drop in three bars before the third chorus he knows exactly where it is that's important to me everybody knows exactly where it is the keyboard players we work with bass players everybody you know brass players orchestral players choirs everybody knows exactly where two or three bars before the third chorus is it makes the the energy I'm not talking about a frenetic energy. I'm talking about a real creative flow. It keeps that flowing, which which I work quite hard to keep going. Uh, and also, I work quite hard to stop when it's time to stop. I, I, I try to be aware of what it is. I try to be really aware of what's happening in the room with all the musicians and respond to that. So getting a great sound before you get to the studio and when you get to the studio, being prepared, being organized, understanding what the music needs. These are all quite simple things, but if you don't get them right, or you keep making a mistake because you don't know the structure of the song, this can actually yeah. shipwreck a song easily, a shipwreck a session, and it can be frustrating. So I think we demonstrated that today and the students got that and they know it's important to us and then Tomorrow we're going to talk about the how we're working with timing because this is another thing about working with click tracks and not working with click tracks and also how, not just drummers, but how all musicians work together 
uh, to make the time happen and yeah. what their relationship and their attitude to the click track yeah. should be. So what it is, is the more in time the playing is, the better it will sound. If the room is, if the room is good, it's worth recording the room. Sometimes the room, if, if the room is, is not terrible, good. What I do, sometimes I'll record the room, even if the room sound is fairly unusable, just to put it into something like the Ocean Wave plug-in on UAD or something. Yeah. Then you can, you can generate a, a, an interesting room sound it helps um gives a it can help give a perspective to the drums i like to think of things being nearer or further certain rooms do have a real magic i'm not just saying it because it's famous but like studio two at abbey road it just knocks me out and it's the, the sound of that room is just thrilling and still it's been thrilling me for 50 years and it still it still thrills me you, you can't fight it if you, if you try to dominate Studio Two, you'll lose. <laughs> the only way the only way to record in there is to go with it, is to be in love with it. You can't fight it. You can't change it. I mean, people dick around saying, "Oh yeah, you can change this, change that." Psst. It still sounds like Studio Two. And unless you take advantage of it, you're missing a real opportunity. I think it's really important that musicians come in and listen. Generally. The, the point of the recording and listening to it is that it's a mirror. You, you, this is what you look like. This, this is how it's sounding. Is, is this what you want? Or do you think we could just take this here or take that there or do this? So it, it, it's tinkering around with the, with the basic thrust of what they're doing. But I, I think unless you play, unless you ask the musicians to come in and listen, it's not as powerful. By just talking to them over their headphones, I'm quite good at time management actually. Uh, uh, so I, I know when we've got to rush, and I know when we've got time to relax. And actually, just talking about something else other than the music can be really creative. It's a human relationship. It's re it's not just I'm the producer, you're the musicians. You've got to play this, and we've got to finish by one o'clock. There is a structure, but I think within that structure. It's up to us how flexible we are within that stru structure. And I like working within structures, because I think what you can do in that space is fascinating. Mm -hmm.